Welcome to the Johns Hopkins Kimmel Cancer Center's Fine Print of Cancer series. I'm Terry Langbaum, Chief Administrative Officer of the Cancer Center. Our experts at the Harry J. Duffy Family Patient and Family Services Program are here to take you through the parts of this disease that have nothing to do with treatment but have everything to do with survival. The Fine Print of Cancer will help you to understand the importance of advanced directives and filing for Social Security Disability. We'll talk about the role of the caregiver. In these segments, we'll also talk about the mixed emotions of cancer, spiritual and pastoral care, and when cancer hurts the most, how our patient and family services offer a steady hand to help you make decisions about hospice care. This series will help you through the fine print of cancer. Everyone needs an advance directive. I know, this is not an easy subject to address but we should all have a document in place that will speak for us if the time comes when we can't speak for ourselves medically. This right to decide applies to all treatments, including those used to extend life. I'm Caroline Griffin, clinical social worker at the Johns Hopkins Kimmel Cancer Center. Advanced directives are personal and should reflect your own wishes and values. An accident or illness can take away a person's ability to make healthcare decisions, but these decisions still have to be made. In Maryland, for instance, we have a law called the Healthcare Decisions Act that allows you to plan in advance. You decide who speaks for you and what medical decisions they should make. Your voice is heard through this document. It's sometimes called a living will or medical power of attorney. If you are unable to speak for yourself, it gives direction about the types of treatments to be used to sustain your life. When you complete an advanced directive, you also consider end-of-life medical conditions too. This is not easy to think about, but remember, an advanced directive is a way for your voice to be heard, even if you are not able to speak. It's so important to choose the right person who will speak for you through your advanced directive. Think about someone you trust and someone who will honor your wishes. This person who will become your health care agent does not have to live in your town. You're choosing this person because they will carry out your wishes and speak for you. Once you've decided on this person, tell them you've selected them as your health care agent. Discuss your medical decisions with them. Talk about your life and what types of treatment are important to you. This is especially important if you are facing a life-limiting illness or injury. Your choice of a healthcare agent could change and your choices of treatment could vary. The good news is your advanced directive can change too. You simply make a new document. And you don't need an attorney, nor do you need it to be notarized. But you do need two witnesses when you sign your document. Once you finish your advanced directive, make copies. Your chosen healthcare agent needs one, and so does your doctor. The hospital will need one if you're admitted. In fact, they should scan it so it becomes part of your medical record. And, of course, keep one for yourself. Advanced directives are for the young and old, those who are healthy and those who are ill. An accident or illness can happen without warning. Visit your state attorney's office website for your state-specific forms. Preparing in advance is so important. An advance directive speaks for you.